All right, man. Uh, something was, I don't want to say close to happening in the abs Rangers game, but it was something I was rooting for. And that was a Curtis McDermott, Gordie Howe hat trick. I mean, you're always going to get the fight. You might sometimes get the assist. You almost never get the goal. Uh, I don't know how close he was in any of the assists, but he almost had some good looks at goals. I was rooting for that hard. I thought about that many times tonight and came close. Ah, man. Don't bet online.ag that one. (laughs) What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. Chris Maselli, I can say my own name. And joining me, (laughs) as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Mr. Kyle Sullivan. And today's episode is brought to you by Primal Origin Oils. And if you got a beard, get Primal Origin Oils. Stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. Check out PrimalOriginOils.com to learn more about their full line of beard care products. Use the code LOCKDOWN for 20% off at checkout. All right, so the Avalanche win their fifth game in a row, beating the New York Rangers, completing this the season sweep of the Rangers. Uh, played them twice within a week and won both games. We will break that all down. A much better game like we kind of thought it would be, uh, but the Avs still in control for most of it. So we'll talk about it. First things first, follow the show on social media outlets, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked on Instagram, Locked on Avalanche (laughs) on Instagram. There we go. I'm I'm so excited because you know they're just they're cruising right now. Like my 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 words and my thoughts are coming out faster than my mouth is letting them. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, opinions, go to lockdownavalanche at gmail.com and subscribe to the show's YouTube channel. All right, sir. Uh, four to two victory for the Avs in control for most of it. Got very interesting. Like good opponents will do. They won't just you know, fold up shop and and call it a call it a day. They will fight to the end. That's exactly what the Rangers did. Uh, and you know, if it wasn't for a Val Nichuskin very late third period goal, uh, it would have been even a much more of a nail biter in that last minute with the Rangers already having scored a goal with their goalie pulled. Uh, you know, it, w- it would have come come down to, you know, you were not comfortable till it said triple zeros on the scoreboard. So uh, f- we'll just get your, your overall thoughts on the game. This was one of those games that the Avalanche, uh, they mentioned it a couple times in the ESPN broadcast. It was the next man up mentality. No Devin Tays. Um, yeah, he's, yeah. And you still, and we had Justin Barron make an appearance. Like it was, it was a commanding win for the Avalanche, and it's one of those that like the Avalanche fans are kind of like, can we start believing in this team now? Because oh yeah, after the uh, the performance against Florida, and now what we're doing to the Rangers, this team is ridiculously good, and you're getting it from everywhere. And even we mentioned in the last episode, Nathan McKinnon facilitating came in clutch in this game. Did you not see it again? Like, did, yeah. did you not see he is playing different? I'm sorry. Like, but he is playing, he's playing both sides of, of how he can play. And I said it yesterday. He still has that burst of, of speed uh, when he wants to use it. That is always in his arsenal. But for a while, it was the only thing in his arsenal. Yep. And and I said it yesterday where it's like he just he's going to just keep doing that and 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 just have the mentality of stop me. Yeah. And people were kind of stopping him more often than not. And I'd really like to know if a conversation was had or if he's just doing this on his own where he he's smart enough to know, like, I got to do things differently. He did it again last night where he picked his spots where he's just going to take off like a rocket. And other times where he settled down, he he came into the zone still with speed, uh, but just collected, 
And, and I think maybe the detriment of this is because maybe this is a new Nathan McKinnon that he again kind of made some passes that I wouldn't have made because he, he should have shot it. So I don't know what's going on. I'm okay with it. I am. It, it's so weird to see. I feel like not enough people are talking about it. Uh, and, 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 I, and I, again, I'm fine with it, but I just kind of feel like there's this new Nathan McKinnon that we're seeing that he's wanting to facilitate more because he knows the goals aren't coming. So I'm just going to play a different style to get everybody else involved because they prove they can do it without me. Yeah. And it was, I think it was very evident, like all your comments that you made about Nathan McKinnon and his facilitating, it was very clear in that first goal um, where he went around the uh, back of the net. And that is typically something that Nate would, he would continue to try and shoot on that backhand to put it in himself. But instead of, making those two or three backhand shots that go off a, a blocker, he just passed it across the blue paint and set it up on a T for a pass. Yeah, it's perfect. And it was perfect. And when I saw that, I was like, he's he's totally locked in for this. And yeah. uh <laughs> and he he showed up again on I believe it was the second goal. Same assist. Like uh, just a beautiful pass like where he would typically set up shot uh set up shop, take that shot and then get beat on um, the defensive side and having to adjust, he's making the smarter play and facilitating. And I'm a fan of this new Nathan McKinnon. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like w- once he kind of figures out how to play this way better, then like it'll open up goals for him because how everybody was on to him and how he plays just that, you know, full throttle all the time when teams start to realize like, okay, we have to play him differently now, then he can attack and then he can go after like his normal goal goal scoring abilities because now teams don't know what to do with him. Now they don't know that before there's just like, if he's got the puck, chances are he's going to, he's going to do everything possible to try to take a shot on net. And now it's like, he's facilitating more and we have to stop his passing, which he's great at passing, but he will still do those moves. He did. I think it was on the power play where he was uh, weaving in and out of a couple guys when, when they were already in the zone. Uh, and it was it was along the left side, and he was stick handling around a couple guys. That's never going to go away. That's ingrained mm-hmm. in his his hockey DNA. Mm-hmm. So that's why it this just makes him more of a dangerous guy because it's not always Nathan McKinnon's got the puck, stop him from shooting. It's Nathan McKinnon's got the puck, and we don't know what he's going to do. He's going to be looking for other guys, or if we give him an inch, he can fire off that wrist shot that's, that is so lethal. And I don't know if this is a product of the injuries that, like with Gabe Landeskog and Devin Taze, but drop back pass on power plays have seemed to become less and less. And mm. you could see it like a successful power play night against New York. Like even that aspect of something that like you were touching on, like everybody knows that's coming. It's starting to disappear and alter as well. So maybe the, and you keep hearing out of everyone in the locker room, we're not even playing our best hockey yet. This sounds like they are in there working and refining this team and not going out there and Mm -hmm. doing the same old, same old expecting results. Um, We have bypassed insanity and we're actually refining this team into one of the top teams in the league. And you had uh, mentioned it that Justin Barron got called up in his first action and uh, Devon Taves entered the COVID protocol. He did test positive and he is experiencing symptoms. So and I think it was Jared Bednar who said, yeah, he's out till after Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, just as he was starting to to become somewhat of a household name and getting thrown up there in, in the Norris talk. Uh, not, not that he's, you know, running away with the Norris trophy or anything like it, but just being involved in that discussion, uh, this happens and yep. you know, it's, it's the life of an abs fan right now. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's hear from primal origin oils and then, uh, we'll continue this talk because still a lot to get to. Um, all right, where were you? So if you got a beard like me, like Kyle, get primal. 
So if you or someone you care about has a beard, it needs to get Primal. Maybe you're that guy who's never considered the benefits of treating your beard with product, but Primal Origin Oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. The products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients and with a low impact on our planet. Primal Origin Oils makes bombs, oils, and whipped butter that are renowned as the best feel and beard products of, yeah, renowned as the best feel and beard care products available. All products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the USA. And the combo kits make a great holiday gift. And if you are a shopper for yourself, you will be glad that you did. We know that every company claims to be the best, but Primal Origin Oil challenges you to compare their ingredients and the feel in in their beard to other products that you have used. And we promise you'll see and feel the difference. Remember the code locked on. It gets you 20% off at primaloriginoils.com. Once again, that promo code is locked on for 20% off at primaloriginoils.com. Also brought to you by Built Bar, and it is the holiday season. Grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. That is Built Bar. It's filled with so much holiday goodness and it's rich in decadent flavor covered in 100% chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, low in sugar, low in net carbs, low in fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. And you have so many flavors to choose from and they are releasing new ones for the holiday season. We got an email of a eggnog flavor that is out and that's going to be limited time. I don't know if you can still get it, but uh, I haven't... We usually get an email when a new flavor is released and then when it's sold out. I haven't mm-hmm. got the sold out flavor yet, but if eggnog is available, uh, I would jump on that real soon. So, uh, and if you are a marshmallow fan, you can get some of the marshmallowy flavors and built bar puffs. They're light and fluffy and marshmallow flavor through and through. Different flavors all covered in chocolate. Taste so good, you won't believe that they're filled with protein. Go to builtbar.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off of your order. Once again, the promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built Bar or Built.com. All right. Uh, Where to continue here? So I think I don't want to say like the Curtis McDermott fight set the tone, but I thought that was uh, I wasn't really expecting that. And 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 some people are like, "Eh, it was pointless. I don't think it was pointless. I, I think it was it was necessary. I think the fact that this Avalanche team will still and kind of for a while be looked at as you're know, not a physical team. Uh, anytime that you know you have someone like Curtis McDermott, which that's why he's on this team. Let's not mm-hmm. kid ourselves. But I've been critical of him for a number of reasons. One of which guys just seem to skate away from him when he wants to drop the gloves. And they almost like laugh at him and skate away. This time him and Ryan Reeves, who's not going to back down from any fight. uh, They dropped the gloves. Pretty good fight. Did it, how much weight did it hold for you? Um, It felt very old school. Like that was the mentality. Like if you ever hear a goon talk about when they come from like the minors or straight out of club into, into the show, they always have to prove themselves against the heavyweight. Like you go in there and you make your name against the heavyweight. And like, if you don't prove yourself as a fighter, a lot of the lesser names won't fight you. And for him to go up against Revo and get the shots that he did, um, like his little left hand with the Jersey and still getting some punches in there and then ended up winning that fight. Um, not only fired up the avalanche, but you could see, uh, Ryan Reeves when he's skating off, like he smiled, he got the respect. He's like, okay, you did it. And like, and that was that was McDermott's his, his moment. He's been waiting on it. He finally got someone to answer the call, and he proved himself. And I feel like this could be a turning point for McDermott going uh, forward. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be I – mean, in, in terms of what, though? It's not like his production on the ice is going to go through the roof. I, but, uh, this might yeah, be the confidence boost that he's needed. Maybe he's been I'm skating around you. out there and feeling like nobody wants to fight me. Maybe he's been even questioning himself, like, what is my role on this team? And after that little win and seeing that bench react the way they did, they were rooting for him just as hard as we were. And maybe this is his way of saying, all right, guys, I got you. You know I got you. 
and they start rewarding him as he rewards them. I will say, like, I saw him skating more. Uh, I mean, normally he's just he's just dormant. Yeah. Normally he's just standing there uh, in the defensive zone. Just whoever's around him, he'll just, you know, give him a little nudge. He was skating up and down the ice. I'm not saying it was a thing of beauty, but he gave himself opportunities. And there was one wide open chance. He miffed it, which didn't surprise me. But he at least he had that chance. And I think he created that chance for himself mm-hmm. because look what happens when you skate and follow the play. Holy yep. crap. I was a little worried that he they put him on a, a pairing with Justin Barron, mm-hmm. who's, you know, brand spanking new. Uh, that's not going to do him any favors when you're pairing him with, with Curtis McDermott. That was a little confusing to me, but didn't didn't really seem to hurt him that much. And I and I thought Baron was fine. I didn't even really think he got that much ice time. Let me see. He uh, almost had yeah. an assist, but there was he one did. extra pass. A one he extra did. pass was made, and he was not on the score sheet. Well, I don't know. It, it was. It, I don't know if the an extra pass was made or the the goal got tipped in, which is why I think he was removed from it. Or, I think that, no, that was, was the. It, it might have been. The, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I think you're right. So I think you know he he was in line to get an assist, but I mean he played nine minutes and uh, I mean he he wasn't jumping off the the screen at me, but I wasn't really expecting it from him. I think he just wanted to get his uh his feet wet for tonight and he's gonna be up there probably i mean if he's taking the spot of of taves who we know is gonna be out for a couple weeks we don't know what's going on with bo byram uh i think this is a good let's you know throw him in there and and get his feet wet game for for justin Barron. and uh you know i think we're gonna see him for the next couple weeks yeah and i was just about to say like justin Barron's a name that everybody's going to need to know i know that's the name you've been championing for a while when it comes to like prospects um like how i i think we had the instagram uh, story where people were asking who we like and i think that was one of the names mentioned it was like sampo yeah. ranto justin Barron's one of those names and once he gets acclimated to the nhl style and how things are going and the speed of the game he's going to be a a pivotal member of this avalanche we know his potential i mean this is his first night and nine minutes is not bad for your first night in the league, especially against the Rangers. Yeah. You don't want him to get out there doing too much and then like starting to doubt himself and then have two McDermott's on the team. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, like the, the Rangers made it interesting and, a, and, and the abs should have had this thing put away, but a really nice play by Alexi Lafreniere uh, knocking a open net, Nazem Kadri backhand out of midair to prevent it from going to four to one with like three minutes left or so, or less than three minutes left. And then that resulted, the Rangers come back down, you know, maybe another minute later, they eventually do get a goal. Um, and now you're at three to two. And obviously the Rangers or the avalanche got the, the Nachuskin goal to put it away, which oddly enough was on uh, a face-off where the Rangers didn't have their goalie pulled. So they had their mm-hmm. goalie pulled and and no open net goal. They have to put their goalie back in because the face-off is at center ice and right off the face-off Nachuskin puck bounces to him and he scores a goal while the, the goalie's in net for the Rangers. Kind of counterproductive for them, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, the other part is you know, it could even been put away earlier because the JT Comfort goal mm-hmm. yes. was was reversed. And I know there's a lot of people up in arms about it. And I think the simple fact because he he made contact with Yorgiev's head and he made his head turn the slightest bit is why that got reversed. If he's brushing up against something, it wasn't much. But when you're turning a goalie's head, no matter how much you're doing it, that is going to get reversed because he, yeah. he, he, you know, well, that's the one part that he he needs to be able to see. Yeah. Uh, and, and when you do that, as soon as I saw that, everything else, I was like, well, that's fine. And even though Gorgiev is kind of skating forward to Comper, uh, it didn't it didn't really matter. He's still in the paint. As soon as I, I knew it was going to get reversed. 
and and it was one of those things where it's like, all right, this is going to be a game that we're not going to settle until the end because that could have. Re- I mean, I think there was like seven minutes left when that happened, and Rangers challenged it, overturned, and like, all right, now we got to keep battling to keep to, to to win this thing. And that was an evidence like the um how significant this win is because usually when we get those calls or anything fluky like that with the avalanche it it kind of rattles us emotionally and it only it it didn't even seem to affect the team and like the rangers kept pushing like they're like towards the end of that third period their pressure and their offensive attack was relentless and darcy kemper played out of his mind tonight and we withstood all of that and even yeah. when they came close, uh, we had the wherewithal to have Valden Chushkin put the game away. Like to see us be that resilient and not phased by that overturned call. Um, it's another shining star on the Avalanche tonight. Here's my question for you, though. Like the yes, he did. He did come in contact with his mask that turned his head. Mm-hmm. The shot that went by went off the post. So JT Comper turned around and put home the sh- you know the the rebound technically off of the one well, maybe went off the crossbar how much time do you give a goalie to say like all right we, we you know the 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 goal interference no longer exists because you've had enough time to recuperate from it i like yeah he turned his head but it wasn't so egregious where like like Georgiev had to like completely collect himself to get back into the play it was it was it, it was turned enough where he didn't see the shot go by him, but it was it was it still warranted because I feel like he could have recuperated and at least tried to had enough time to block the rebound attempt. So I don't know where where that if that's a gray area of if, if that if the initial shot went in, then yes, that that's goalie interference. And I still think it was goalie interference. I'm just saying because it wasn't so egregious and and it took him completely out of the play. Could he not have made a a attempt at that rebound because he had enough time to get back into the play is kind of my I, argument here. I feel like it was last year, if I'm not mistaken, I I believe this was called against Boston in the playoffs that there mm-hmm. was a very egregious long goalie interference. Like there was enough time to rec- um to get back in the play and it was still called goalie interference. And I believe if I'm, I mean, I'm going off what I remember what they deem it as is once there's goalie interference that stays with it. Like that should have been something that was called and it it hangs on that play. Like, because I mean, if, if they're, if they're, I mean, well, goalie interference is a penalty. mm -hmm, Exactly. That's not, Right. They're saying everything so they're, after that is a result of that penalty, whether good or bad. Like he played through the penalty that wasn't called, or that is something that should have been called. And everything after that threw him off in a way that goalie interference, everything after that threw him off because of that one goalie interference. So if they could find it, like all of that extracurricular afterwards is still nullified because of the. I gotta look. I got to look it up and get get a solid uh, foundation on this because, I, and I'm not saying that that's clearly what happened. It's so, it happened so quickly. Um, I, I I agree with the call. I really do. I really do. Yeah. But uh, and, it's one of those things that I want to look up, get clarification on. And the one good shot that you saw of it was the behind the net ESPN power play camera. Of Love it. Just, it's just Love turning it. the head. Like that was our only look every other, sh- like, kind of look at it, you that's really all ESPN need... was showing yeah yeah, yeah. so Which like it's all you needed it's all you needed so you could take that as it is but that's how that's how it landed right all right uh still more to get to on this uh four to two avalanche victory their fifth in a row uh but before we get to that betonline.ag it's got you covered all season with more prop bets odds and lines than ever before as the football season continues to march towards the playoffs and bet online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website and sign up today to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code locked on to receive your bonus from basketball 
football, the NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. It's where the game starts. That's betonline.ag. Kel McCarr with his 13th goal of the season in very Kel McCarr fashion. Uh, right inside the blue line, he just has that amazing ability to f- shoot a puck through traffic, hitting nobody but net. Um, and 13 goals on the season is a career high for him. And we have 57 games left, or 56 games now, to go- left in the season. Uh, dude's an animal. Uh, we, you know, I love talking about him just because he, he's so much fun to watch, but what did he have other than that? Did he, did he, was he in on an assist? No, he was not. Okay. So the one goal, but 27 and a half minutes of ice time tonight, uh, when, when, you know, you need a guy to lean on, uh, this is their man. And I'm not saying maybe more so than Nathan McKinnon, not, not that they're, you know, the, the, it's sh- the, the tide is shifting on who the superstar is of this team. He is one of them, but I just feel like he is their go-to to, to quarterback this team. Exactly. Uh, whether it's the power play or not. Yeah. He has been the most consistent member of the team this year. Um, like he's been more consistent than Nazem Kadri, and I've been a fan of his forever. And like yeah, Kale, man. Kale has gone to another level in his game, both defensively and offensively. And he's kind of got this grain of leadership in a way where you right. can see him like chirping and orchestrating before faceoffs. And it's this new Kale McCarr that like, if this is what we get for the rest of the year, like I, I feel bad for defenses who have to go against that top line with Nathan McKinnon up there, Miko, and then you also have Kale back there. And whoever they have on that uh, defensive pair, I don't know yeah. who you get in front of because everybody's going to make you hurt. And there's just guys that are, you know, they're just starting their career out and you start watching them, you know, the beginning of their career that you know the, the things that they're doing now uh what's in store for them you're just like man th- this this guy is going to be a force for a very long time and that is cal mccarr to a t uh definitely want to talk about darcy kemper as well because i thought he played fantastic uh definitely wants the, probably that that second goal that was the rebound off the off the face off Went a little bit too far. To, I think he thought he had it because you look yeah. at his, the, the reaction and he kind of, you know, caves in like it's in his midsection and then he realizes it's not. And then by that time, it's 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 gone. And then the, the first goal was just a solid goal. That was a good goal scoring, like two two goals that are, you know, one. The first one is difficult. The second one is just kind of a mistake by thinking you have it for as long as you had it and you didn't. But. Interestingly enough, the expected goals for this game, if you're going on uh, Money Puck, the Rangers had more expected goals in the Avalanche in this game, 4.73 to 3.45. So, I mean, that means that the Rangers were getting pretty good looks and not coming through on them. But it also means that Darcy Kemper was playing a really good game. So the the Rangers had, like I said, an expected goal uh, average of 4.72 and and Kemper only gave up two goals. So he had 2.73 goals saved above expected. That's phenomenal. Yeah. That is that you know, that is saying the Rangers should have pure and simple, this is saying the Rangers should have scored more than they did. And mm-hmm. the reason they didn't is cuz Darcy Kemper was was saving pucks that maybe he shouldn't have been saving because they should have been goals. So, you know, the deep stats say that he had a very very good game. Um, and I, and I, I agree with, I think he's, he's starting to play well. And I think, I don't think since, since he's come back, I think he's four and oh, I don't think he's lost since he's come back from his, his injury. Yeah. We, we don't lose much anymore. And, <laughs> um, and it honestly, the confidence that he had tonight, um, even with that goal, uh, ESPN was talking like that's one that he wish he had back, but I know that's one of those things that as fans are like, I bet you a skate fell off. 
That's kind of what it looked. <laughs> that's what I'm, it's. It had that look to it, and you're just like, oh, something fluky happened, whatever. But like, he cleaned yeah, it up. Like, yeah, he cleaned it up like two or three minutes later when they tried going around the back of the net and tried to stuff it in, and he got three saves off a blocker, just like bam, 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 and. Darcy looked incredible. He was not letting up anything after that. Yeah. And for him to get that confidence, that's just something else that we can add to our repertoire. But yeah. he is he is next level right now. And and they were saying it in the in the broadcast. And it is something that we've talked about. Like he wants to be a reason that the Avalanche win some games. It doesn't want to they don't want to just be scoring seven goals every game and just out scoring everybody. He wants to be responsible for, you know, a, a two to one win. Mm-hmm. or you know a one to nothing win get a shutout or something like that um and and tonight was was a very very good performance by him i don't think you can deny that um and one other thing i want to get to in the, in the two games the Avs have played against the rangers i'm going off of two screens here so it might take me a second to uh match these up here's what the avalanche gave up to kind of uh some of the rangers higher end players uh Panarin uh in the more the game from last night had one assist in the first game uh one assist so he had two assists total in two games Lafreniere had uh where is he how come he's not in this uh oh he's not in the uh, did he not play the first game he must not have he must not have played in the first game. I thought he did, but he's not in the stat sheet from them. He didn't have anything then. Chris Kreider, nothing in the first game. No goals, no assists. Nothing in last night's game. No goals, no assists. Capo Caco, no goals, no assists in either game. Uh, Zabinijad, nothing. No goals, no assists in either game. Alex Fox. Um, or Adam Fox. I don't know why I said Alex. I have a friend, Alex Fox. That's why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Fox. Um, he had one assist, and that was last night. They shut down their major players, and that's what you have to do against good teams. And and you're the Rangers aren't going to win. I just feel like in the two games watching that the, these two teams have played against each other. I just feel like the Rangers don't match up well with the Avalanche. No. They're a very good team, and they're going to have a very good season, and they could do some damage in the playoffs. But there's just some teams that you don't match up well against, and I think for for the the Avalanche, uh, or for the Ra- yeah for the Avalanche, they they match up very well against the Rangers, and obviously it's the opposite for the Rangers. They're, it's not a good matchup for them. I feel. Yeah, and this is one of those kind of matchup discrepancies that teams address in the offseason when they make moves that really don't make a lot of sense. And you say, well, this is how we handle the avalanche when we play them this year. Um, that's yeah. It's just how these kind of things work. But yeah, it, it not only shut down the stars, but embarrassed both of the goalies on the Rangers. So, yeah. And we yeah. were talking yesterday about the goalie situation. What would it look like? Obviously, they went up against Gorgiev. And Shesterkin still has not come back. I no. guess he has made this trip. They're on a road trip right now. The Rangers are, obviously, if they're on the West Coast right now. I don't know how many games it is. Uh, but I think they, they said that he did make the trip with them, but is not. they don't know when exactly he's going to come back yet. Uh, so, And for the Avs, we were saying how possibly they might hold off on, on Darcy Kemper until Thursday when that's a division game. They didn't feel the need to do that. They they put him in there, and and we'll see what happens. You got a day off, and then you're going up against the Preds on Thursday. Who do you, what do you think he goes again on Thursday, or do you think this is now when they slot in Frankie? This is now it's going to be hard to pull a hot goalie. It's, yeah, because he's playing well. He's playing. He's playing well. really well. It's yep. going to be one of those you ride until he's either like showing signs or it's just inevitable, but. I say keep riding the high goalie. Yeah, might as well. All right, everybody. That is going to do it. Um, I, I was just keep trucking five in a row. So, uh, you know, a division game coming up. Very big division game because 
Preds are keeping track mm-hmm. and and keeping up with the Avs right now and the rest of the division. So a big two points. You want to get them in regulation. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, thank you, everybody, for making this your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. Go and check out Locked on NHL as your second listen and get updated on everything going on around the league. It's going to do it. He is Kyle Sullivan, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow.